Hey, this is Digital Byte Computing, and today we're going to draw up a WAN diagram and show you the different components of a WAN. So my name is Emilio, and I work in the IT industry, and today we're looking at a WAN diagram. A WAN stands for Wide Area Network. Essentially, it's a network compiling of multiple LAN setups. So you've got a LAN, which is a local area network, which you could have in a home or in a work environment, which is your local presence. And then when you're connecting to another network, uh, the combination of that would be what's called a WAN or a wide area network. We've got here our WAN, all right, which is our internet, our cloud, whatever you want to call it. And then you've got your branches connected to each other. One, two, three, four. And of course, each of these in turn would have all of their own IT infrastructure connected into each of these and then out to your WAN. Uh, they could be having redundant links between each other as well. Uh, a lot of places will have multiple links into your internet. So one could be a faster link. Let's say you've got a hundred megabit per second link. Okay. And then this one could be a 10 megabit per second link. This could be your primary link, so all of your main data goes from one site um, over 100 meg. So then if this link goes away, it then fails over to like a 10 meg link. Um, in a lot of instances, uh, your secondary link could be a VPN. It could be a slower VPN connection between all of your sites. All right. So obviously having two links between your sites out to your internet um, provides you multiple levels of redundancy from an overall link level. So we've got a site, site A, right, like so. Now this site, in turn, would have a number of different sorts of devices within it. So site A would have a, a router connected to some switches, and then in turn connected to some computers, all right? So site A, which could be a particular office uh, in, a, in a workplace, for example, now connecting to a separate office, which we will call site B. So site B, likewise, will have a router, a switch, and some devices hooked up to that. All right. Now, between these two, you're going to have a connection. All right. This connection from site A to site B could be a local connection using a, a direct link between your two sites. This can be something that's set up between a service provider and the business, for example. In most scenarios, you're going to have some sort of a internet link. All right. So between here, you would have your internet. All right. This is your internet. And they could be connected over what's called an MPLS. So essentially your connection goes out, your site A would go out from your router out into your M MPLS, which is configured uh, and potentially managed by an, a, an external provider, such as a, as a service provider, an ISP. And then likewise, you've got into your site B, you've got a connection between the two, All right? And then likewise, you can have a, another site down here. We'll call this site C with its own devices, etc., etc. And then in turn, that is connected out into your MPLS. You could all, then also have remote sites. So this could be like a, um, you know, let's say this is a, you've got two sites that are within, you know, 100 meters of each other. Maybe it's like in a, in a factory or in a plant. We've got a site C, but then that is broken down to a smaller site C, uh, site C2, which in turn would have a router. And this could be connected directly from one to the other. All right, you may also be a switch and you've got a link, direct link from this switch to a switch on this side. All right, and that is connected into here, which goes out to your MPLS for all of your other sites are connected. You can also have more complex sort of WAN diagrams if you're looking at multi-state. So let's say I've got a site here, we'll call this one. I've got a site here, we'll call this two. We've got a site here, we'll call this three. We've got a site here, four, 
a side here, five, and then we've got a side down here, six. Okay, so now we've got a number of different setups here, and we'll draw a nice internet cloud here. Okay, and what we could have is this is in a different state. State one, this is in a different state. State two, and this could be state three. All right, now this could be all connected differently, but you could have, you've got two different sorts of sites here. They could be connected directly one to another via a direct link, right? Same here, these could be direct, connected directly to each other via a direct link. Let's say two links, one from one to two, and then three may go out to your WAN, and from one to two to, to the LAN as well, with multiple links. So three, to communicate with one and two, even though they're within the same state, would go out to your internet, and then you've got multiple connections, say something like that, if you don't have a link between these two, and then from a state, it goes that way as well. So each one of these would have their own internal infrastructure, such as your routers and your switches, and your relevant users within that, and then they're all interconnected, going out to the internet with multiple links, primary and a secondary, essentially like an active passive link, one could be a slower connection than the other, all going out to your internet. So this is what we would call a wide area network or a WAN. So that is my brief, brief summary. It does get a little bit more complex than that if you're talking about international and how you're gonna connect everything together. But that is my quick summary. Please comment below if you want to know more. I would love to hear from you. It also helps me grow my channel and reach more, more people with this information. We'll talk to you next time. So if you found that video helpful, please like it and subscribe to my channel, Digital by Computing, just on the button there for more videos.